Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second lesson on non-Newtonian calculus. I'm going to give you a non-rigorous introduction to some of the fundamental ideas of the geometric derivative. Last time we looked at the growth function f of t equals 2 to the t. I think we all agreed that a growth rate or derivative of 2 would be intuitively more satisfying. The classical slope is expressed as the difference in the y values over the difference in the t values. By restricting ourselves to unit intervals on the t-axis, the slope simply equals the difference in the y values. Moving from left to right over each unit interval, the slopes of the secant lines are in order 4 minus 2, that's 2, 8 minus 4, that's 4, 16 minus 8, that's 8, 32 minus 16, that's 16, and 64 minus 32, that's 32. We want to create a new type of slope that equals 2 over each unit interval. Look at the picture. Can we see what to do with the y values in order to get 2? That's right. Instead of taking differences, we divide. With that in mind, let's think. Did you notice how the t-values of 2 and 5 came into play? I bet you did. Okay, let's see what happens on an arbitrary interval, rs. This time we have f of r is 2 to the r, f of s is 2 to the s. The ratio f of s over f of r is 2 to the s over 2 to the r, which equals 2 to the s minus r. To obtain the result 2, we'll have to raise the ratio to the power 1 over s minus r. That means if we guessed correctly, the geometric slope of a function should look like this. And the geometric derivative would be this limit. Do our results match the creator's definitions? Yes. We can see the definitions on page 11 of the book called Non-Newtonian Calculus. In case you're wondering why the name geometric, it turns out that the geometric average or mean plays a fundamental role in this system of calculus. Hope you had fun. Thanks for watching.